A new generation of military means a new generation of veterans. As the Afghanistan campaign winds down, more service men and women will transition over to civilian life. Some will be wounded by their experiences. The wounds we can see have become more treatable than ever before. But what about the wounds we can't? My temper, um, I was verbally aggressive. Not physically, but verbally. And I could snap at people, pretty much anyone. <laughs> It's estimated that between a fifth and a quarter of soldiers in any conflict return with some mental trauma, which can impact on their day-to-day -day lives. Called shell shock in the First World War, and now known as post-traumatic stress disorder, life-threatening experiences can have lasting effects on a person's emotional and mental health. But what's the medical reason behind flashbacks, hyper-alertness, irrational fear and aggressive behaviour that often goes hand-in-hand -hand with PTSD and what can be done to help? Post-traumatic stress disorder is a cluster of symptoms that many people experience after they've been exposed to traumatic events. Usually the traumatic events involve an intense emotional reaction. It could be fear, helplessness, hopelessness, terror. And it, it could be from combat, a car accident, uh, a, a bad storm, uh, many, many different events. Gas, gas, gas would come up, we'd be respirators on, and you didn't know if there's anything in the air that could actually physically kill you. You can't see it, you can't hear it, you know, and it was, um, and that's where the small little dramas started coming in to it. Kevin Thatcher was part of the invasion force that entered Iraq in 2003. At that time, no one knew if Saddam Hussein had weapons of mass destruction. Waiting on the border in Kuwait, Kevin's unit were run through gas attack exercises frequently, never knowing if this time it was real. At night, after about two weeks of it, you'd have nightmares. Shout out, amount of times I shouted out, gas, 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 and you see everyone start putting their respirators on, but I was just dreaming. So, but, um, and that's where it starts building up to other things that have happened. A year later, he was back, fighting in the subsequent war. This time he could see the enemy, but the experience was no less traumatic. In Adamar, where we was deployed, people would do cutthroat signs like that across here. Um, they, we could feel the atmosphere in the city was, feel it, the tension was there, that we weren't wanted there, and it would always feel an ambush coming along. You see the, the spotters on the roof, and you knew straight away something was going to happen. Kevin left the military in 2006, but it wasn't until four years later that he noticed something was wrong. It came and it was like a rush. I could go in a, sh a shopping centre and I could hear what everyone was saying. Just everyone around me, it's just like I just wanted to get out. They could be 40 odd foot away and you can hear them, but you hear everyone in that perimeter. Hyper awareness like this is one of the symptoms of PTSD, caused by being in a constant state of alert during the traumatic experience. And basically, it's when um, you're in Iraq, you're taught to pick up everything for your training, everything's a threat. And that's why it comes to that shop and said everything's a threat. An ex girlfriend told Kevin he needed help and put him in touch with a charity that provides therapy to veterans to help them reprocess traumatic memories, strip them of the associated emotion, rendering them harmless. Any threat to a person's sense of survivability and safety will be captured in the, ma in the person's brain as a traumatic memory. It all starts in the limbic system, a part of the brain that deals with the so-called fight or flight response. During a life-threatening situation, a memory template is laid down that the brain can hold up to similar situations to see if they match. If that memory isn't filed properly into the narrative brain afterwards, situations that aren't dangerous but feel similar could trigger the same fight or flight response. Flashes from people's cameras, it was a massive one for me. It was like I realized, and then I started realizing, oh yeah, it does trigger, it triggers flashbacks. Um, mainly for me through um, flashbacks to mortar explosions and um, RPG attacks. Charity PTSD Resolution put Kevin in touch with a therapist that helped him visualize his trauma without putting him through the pain of reliving it. Traditionally, the old-fashioned idea was that if you talk about it, you will sort of release it and it will get better. Well, we know now, clinically, that talking about it actually 
makes it worse because every time it's talked about, certainly in, in an emotional way, it adds another layer of emotion on the memory and it, it just gets worse. Kevin no longer has problems with camera flashes. In fact, he's now found a new passion he could never dream of before, photography. But therapy is not the only way that veterans have found release. In the Netherlands, a charity originally set up to train dogs for the blind is now pairing canine helpers with Dutch veterans with PTSD. Dogs can help form a bridge between the veteran and the world, and are trained to lead their owner away from crowds or stressful situations when they start to sense anxiety growing. Uh, I uh, know ex-soldiers, veterans, who were so scared that they didn't uh, even dare to leave their home. They didn't dare to go to a shop. They didn't dare to go and bring their children to school. Um, and now they have this dog and they learn to trust on this dog. And uh, the quality of life of these uh, veterans has improved drastically. General Van Oom commanded Dutch forces and suffered his own highly personal loss. The director of this foundation asked me if I would hand over the first assistance dog to a veteran in the Netherlands. And this veteran was the uh, medical sergeant major who was present at the location where two Dutch soldiers died. That was my son as a lieutenant and platoon commander and his driver. They died at an IED uh, explosion in Afghanistan. Following this chance encounter, General Van Oom decided to dedicate himself to training PTSD puppies, but says that ultimately prevention is better than cure and that nations need to recognize the care needed for their servicemen and women from the moment they're about to deploy. And we demand a lot of our soldiers and uh, they have to be warrior, they have to be diplomat and sometimes they also have development aid uh, skills they need. Our society has a responsibility um, to see to it that our soldiers start at a mission well equipped with good colleagues, with good rules of engagement. Uh, everything to see to it that when they come home they can say we had a useful mission and the chance that they have problems with the mission afterwards is as small as possible. Treatment only works, however, if a veteran seeks help. Once a service person has been discharged from the military, it can be hard to follow up on how they're adjusting to civilian life. Often this period after leaving active service can see problems surface. It's because the container has gone. I mean, the military is a good container. You sleep, eat and live as part of a military system. All your friends are there, your work is there, your accommodation's there, your food is prepared for you. So once you leave and you leave your structure, your identity, who cares that you might have been a sergeant or a corporal? Nobody in civilian life really understands what kind of responsibility that brings and who you are as a result of that rank. And nobody really understands or people haven't served what it's like to serve in the military, let alone on operations, let alone being deployed to a war, uh, let alone in combat. Added to that is the stigma sometimes attached to mental illness. Some may feel ashamed to admit to feeling unwell. I think it's still very hard for people to come forward. I uh, see a lot of people as they're departing the military, I do VA evaluations for them, and particularly the senior leaders will come in often and say, you know, I really felt like I had to be strong for my folks, and so I've suffered in silence for years. Now that I'm done, I want this on my record, I want to get some treatment, I want to get better. At this year's NATO summit in Wales, leaders made known their support to veteran care in an armed forces declaration which paid tribute to servicemen and women and committed to sharing best practices and lessons learned between nations to best care for returning military. Well, it falls principally on the individual nations to provide that care and support, but the Alliance can also play a key role. NATO helps to maintain and strengthen the bonds between our armed forces and indeed from the societies from which our armed forces are drawn. It also shares best practices and lessons learned on how to care and provide support uh, to military personnel, including to those who suffer from psychological wounds uh, such as post-traumatic stress disorder. But with the increased recognition, more military have started coming forward, stretching resources and causing a spike in numbers of cases, with veterans from conflict stretching back to the Second World War coming forward.
I think there will continue to be an increase now that the war in Afghanistan has ended. Many people will feel actually the job is done and once people kind of drop their guard, their uh, post-traumatic stress symptoms will start to emerge. I think it's going to take a, a lot of time and a real cultural shift before the military image of strength can accept that that may also mean sometimes you get injured and sometimes you get damaged and to see a behavioral health or a mental health injury or damage, just as they would see an injury to an arm or a leg. That's a, a, a significant shift that we're not quite through with yet. This year, celebrating the 100th anniversary of the beginning of the First World War, veterans' charities and support groups are receiving more exposure. But as the poppies slowly disappear from our streets, our screens and our lapels, some of the soldiers, sailors and airmen will still be fighting a highly personal war one that, with help, can be won. Any soldier that's, um, or anyone with PTSD that's having a problem, um, don't feel afraid to, to, to go out and think you're not a coward for talking about it. Don't be ashamed that you've got it because it's your brain dealing, dealing with things in certain ways and uh, just come out, talk about it, and you realise that you're not the only one in that situation. I'm extremely grateful for the way my life's turned out. It's pretty great at the moment, so. Ruth Owen for the NATO Channel.